Xiaogang, are you ready to start? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, great. So welcome back everyone uh, after our brief break. So the next uh, talk and the final talk of this meeting will be given by Xiaogang Wen of MIT and he'll speak about uh, categorical symmetry, a holographic view of symmetry. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to thank the organizer for organizing this uh, uh, virtual uh, uh, meeting. Uh, I really enjoy this all the talk in the last uh, three days. Uh, first, uh, uh, let me introduce uh, my collaborators. And uh, so uh, uh, Wen Jie uh, and me are physicists in this uh, collaboration. And Liang Kong and Tian Lan is a mathematical physicist. And Zhi Hao Zhang and uh, uh, Hao Zheng is a, uh, are mathematicians. You know, I should really thank uh, Liang Kong to convince some mathematicians working on this project. You can also imagine what collaboration may look like. So basically some kind of one dimensional uh, collaboration. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, 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 three recent work. Uh, so I just uh, uh, posted here. And uh, it's really about uh, 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 some new way to understand uh, symmetry. And uh, uh, since uh, there's a lot of results can be obtained from this new way to, to see, to view symmetry. First, let me just uh, uh, review what is symmetry. You know, everybody know what is symmetry. But uh, uh, here I want to emphasize that uh, the symmetry is really just a set of uh, local constraints. And it's a set of a linear constraints. Uh, sorry, not local, it's a set of linear constraints. So it's, a, it's really uh, uh, in this form. We have a symmetry transformation uh, which commute with a Hamiltonian, and uh, that gave us a linear constraint on the, on the Hamiltonian. And, uh, so usually uh, this uh, constraint, this, uh, we have many constraints, uh, many linear transformations. So this A is uh, usually uh, maybe like a group element. So that's like a, a global symmetry. Or the A can label different loops of the surface. And so this uh, loop and surface uh, so where, is where this uh, transformation act on. And in this case, uh, we get uh, some, some kind of a higher symmetry. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, this uh, symmetry act on the whole space, we get a zero symmetry. If the symmetry act on this so-called co-dimension co K, close the subspace, and all those are closed subspace, then we get some kind of K symmetry. Okay. So, so that's a usual way uh, to look at a uh, symmetry. But uh, here I want to emphasize that uh, the symmetry is really a class of a Hamiltonian. Okay. And uh, the, this transformation or linear constraint is just a method or trick to, uh, to select this uh, class of uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So, so, so the, this class of Hamiltonian is what we are uh, after. And uh, you can imagine if there's two different uh, way to select same class of Hamiltonians, then we will say, well, they are, they are these two different way or even the symmetry actually are equivalent. So the symmetry is really about the class of a Hamiltonian. And today I'm going to uh, discuss uh, several other way to select this class of Hamiltonian rather than from some kind of a commutation relation or some linear algebra, some other way. So, uh, so the first way is uh, this uh, so-called the categorical way uh, to view uh, symmetry. Okay, so basically uh, this way is uh, also familiar to, to physicists. It's just uh, using conservation law to describe symmetry rather than from the uh, commuting algebra. Okay, so let's uh, imagine, uh, consider a, a quantum system like a, a two-dimensional spin one-half system, which I draw here. With very simple Hamiltonian, that's basically a magnetic field uh, in the in the z direction. So the ground state, uh, the spin all polarized. So that's the ground states. And uh, here I want to emphasize that uh, to really describe a quantum system, just give a Hamiltonian is not quite enough. We should also give those so called deformation class. That's basically a set of a local operator which is allowed. 
So we will see why this deformation class is important. So what is the expectation? Actually, if the ground state have energy gap, say the ground state have energy gap like this, and then the extension basically is something can be trapped. Then something can be trapped. And uh, so, uh, so we can imagine uh, we have a trap. Uh, we have trap Hamiltonian. And uh, the trap Hamiltonian actually usually something belong to this uh, deformation class. Okay. So uh, then we assume the original Hamiltonian plus the trap also have a gap and also have this kind of spectrum. Then the new ground state will be uh, so-called uh, excitation, will be the wave function describing excitation. So that is a, a general way to define excitation. If trap is point-like, we define point-like excitation. If trap is a string-like, then we define a string-like excitation. So this, uh, uh, this may be a physicist way uh, to really define uh, excitation. But usually, uh, for example, in this example, uh, we can have a reverse magnetic field in one, in this location, reverse magnetic field in, on two sides, we can create one spin flip or two spin flip. In general, we have a many, many, many kind of uh, excitation if you, if you do this way. But uh, usually, we don't say those excitations are different. We really consider this a type of uh, excitation. So we introduce this uh, concept of type. So type basically equivalent class, we say, uh, uh, this extension and that extension is not so much different. They belong to the same type. And uh, so, so therefore type is a very important notion uh, when we discuss uh, excitations. And uh, so, uh, so this type are really defined by this uh, Hamiltonian certainly, also determined by the deformation class. So here the deformation class became very important. Uh, without symmetries, if you don't have any symmetry, we still have the same Hamiltonian. We claim we don't have any symmetry. That means uh, we allow our deformation class to be any local operator. Any local operator will be fine. In this case, we find that uh, the single spin flip and a double spin flip can all be smoothly connected to the ground states, no spin flip. We are like a rotating, just a, we, can, we can just a rotating magnetic field. You know, when you rotate the magnetic field, we can just a flip, uh, rotate the spin. So without closing energy gap, that's very important. If you can deform without closing energy gap, that means they are equivalent. So these all the three excitation are equivalent, and this is no excitation zero ground state is actually also called excitation, but we call the trivial trivial type. So therefore, in this case, you don't have a trivial type if you don't have a symmetry. But if you do have a, a Z two symmetry generated by this uh, rotation around the Z axis of a spin. And so means the deformation class is a Hamiltonian uh, commute with this uh, uh, rotation symmetry, spin rotation symmetry. Then we find that the double spin flip and the no spin flip uh, belong to the same type. And uh, we, which call the Z2 charge zero. And the single spin flip belongs to a different type, which we call the Z2 charge one, which is not denoted by E. So, so therefore, uh, when you have a symmetry, uh, the type of excitation, this type of excitation is a different, which it depends on the, on the symmetry. So, uh, so those types can have some fusion rule. Uh, for example, the, this uh, one fuse with anything else uh, still give you same thing. So one actually is a fusion unit. And, uh, but the E and the E fuse together give us a one. And this is just a fancy way to say that we have mode two conservation. Okay, and, uh, and, we, we'll, and when you have these types, and uh, there's a collection of a type of extension uh, have a fancy name uh, called the fusion two category, actually. So in, the, in the mathematics, uh, they call those, uh, uh, those extension uh, 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 form uh, this uh, uh, called the category. The fusion, the category really is just a, a mathematical language to describe extensions, okay. So let me just introduce a little bit in more detail. What is this fusion two category? What is this fusion two category is about? So in so fusion two category describe excitation in two dimensional space. So two category describe excitation in two dimensional space. In two dimensional space, in general, we could have a string excitation. That's a one dimensional excitation. 
And actually, in this huge two category, you do have one dimensional extension. And it belongs to a type. This is certainly we have a trivial type. We always have a trivial type. We have non trivial type coming from the E condensation. You know, we have this E particle, which have a mole two conservation. When E condense, they could form these uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking states. So this ES is a string. And this string corresponds to the spontaneous symmetry breaking state from the E condensation. So, so, so in some sense, they are non-trivial type, but they are descendant. They are really coming from this, uh, this uh, E particle. So they are they kind of descendant. Usually in physics, we don't talk about those descendant uh, excitation. But in mathematics, uh, you know, the point about these papers, uh, this descendant excitation turned out to be important to see the full mathematical structure. And you have a point like excitation, that's what we just discussed, the trivial one and the E particle. This is usually in physics we talk about. So those are generators, you can generate descendant type. So combine this string excitation, the particle excitation, and their fusion, and the braiding, and uh, all these data, then we get something called a fancy name, two category. Okay. Yeah, two category is just really just a theory uh, for excitations. So it's really a very natural uh, uh, in physics. However, the point of view here is very different. You can see we have, a, we have this two category, we talk about the fusion, and uh, we don't talk about the transformation. We don't have talk about environments. But however, in mathematics, there is a well-known Tanaka duality. It's really that uh, from the fusion of a charged object, we can recover the full symmetry group. Actually, the fusion structure contains all the information about the symmetry group. So we can recover the symmetry group. So therefore, uh, so therefore this uh, fusion uh, category and the symmetry group are kind of a one-to-one. -one. So therefore, so that's come up to this uh, 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 new point of view. That is, uh, we use a fusion category to encode the symmetry or to describe uh, symmetry. It's just fancy way is that we use conservation law to describe uh, symmetry. And uh, so in a more formal sense, you can see the emphasize symmetry means a class of a Hamiltonian. Okay, which have a Z2 symmetry. But actually, this fusion two category also gave us a class of Hamiltonian. Uh, basically, it means uh, the, the, this class of Hamiltonian, which have uh, this very strange symbol, really describing so called interacting excitation. So here we imagine those uh, excitations, the E and the one, those excitations, they can interact. We can assign any interaction which is compatible with the fusion structure and the breeding structure. And those, those interactions basically correspond to a so-called effective Hamiltonian for those excitations. And those also give us a class Hamiltonian. So the claim is that uh, these two class of Hamiltonian are really the same. So, so therefore, uh, so that's a, so the using fusion category is another way to specify a class Hamiltonian. It's another way to specify symmetry. So this is what I mean by uh, using a categorical way uh, to view uh, to view symmetry. Okay, so this is a, uh, uh, this is a uh, one point. Okay, then the, uh, another point is that uh, there's a third way to view symmetry. <laughs> so this categorical way is uh, one way, just using conservation law to view symmetry. Actually, there is uh, another way, so called using entanglement uh, to, view, uh, to view symmetry. So what is a uh, uh, what is the uh, entanglement way to view symmetry? So here is that uh, we first uh, start with this categorical way to view symmetry. We use a fusion category uh, to view uh, uh, to view this Z two symmetry. Okay, and uh, what that means? That means that uh, we don't think about the transformation. We don't think about the symmetry. We just think about those uh, particles in this fusion category. So in some sense, we treat this particle in the fusion category as if they are excitation in topological order. So these are, what do you mean by excitation in topological order? This kind some kind of code word, say, when something is viewed as excitation in topological order, it means that there's no symmetry. Uh, we, can, we can ignore the symmetry. And uh, those excitations really coming from some kind of entanglement or some, something, but not from symmetry. So basically, using fusion to category to look at the symmetry is really try to ignore the uh, sensor transformation but they're using topological order uh, to, to look at this. But then there is a question is that uh, which topological order can produce 
this particular uh, excitation, this particular fusion category, which uh, describe those uh, excitation. Basically, which topology can produce excitation one, which is trivial, and uh, another excitation, bosonic excitation, which is called E. Okay. And this question actually turned out to be not so trivial. It turns out that uh, we need uh, something in one higher dimension. We need a, a, a three-dimensional, uh, three spatial dimension, Z2 gate theory. Then at, a, at one particular boundary of the three-dimensional Z2 gate theory, then we can recover this type of excitation. And uh, so to see how that works, so let me introduce what is the 3D, 3D means spatial dimension. And uh, so uh, uh, Z2 gate theory. And uh, as usual, we have a point like excitation we call the uh, bosonic Z2 charge. We also have a Z2 flux stream. Z2 flux stream is a string station. So the charge have this uh, E fusion, E E fusion to one. String also annihilate each other. So string string also have a Z2 uh, fusion. Okay. And this is 3D uh, Z2 gate theory, or uh, three plus one D Z2 gate theory, have many boundaries. And there one particular boundary is coming from the condensing the string. We condensing the string uh, to can, we can form a boundary. And in this boundary, we no longer have a string because string is merged with the ground state. It's just a, a, a disappeared. But however, the, the, the charge, the bulk charge E still represents a non-trivial extension at the boundary. So therefore, the boundary of this uh, uh, string condensation is really just, uh, uh, it's just, this, uh, uh, just one on the E. So this uh, string condensed boundary just recover uh, this uh, fusion category. Okay, so, so because of this, uh, the three plus one, three plus one dimension topology order in one higher dimension have a boundary which can recover this fusion category. And this fusion category also corresponds to the symmetry. So at the end, we find that uh, this topology order in one higher dimension also encode a symmetry. Yeah. So this is what I mean by using entanglement uh, to, uh, to describe a symmetry. And in this case, uh, we view this, uh, the class of a two-dimensional uh, uh, symmetric uh, Hamiltonian, this Hamiltonian class, as uh, the, the boundary Hamiltonian, as a boundary Hamiltonian of this uh, uh, Z2 gate theory in one higher dimension. So yeah, that's basic message. So we, in this boundary, we have an all different kind of boundary Hamiltonian. We can use those boundary Hamiltonian to simulate this, uh, this uh, Z2 symmetric uh, Hamiltonian. So this is uh, uh, what we call this holographic point of view of a symmetry, just using this topology in one higher dimension to describe a symmetry. Okay, so from this point of view, it's clear that uh, the, the, the Z2, the mode two, cons uh, mode, mode two conservation at the boundary coming from the mode two conservation in the bulk. In the bulk, we have E particle have mode two conservation. Then the mode two conservation when the spark part come to boundary, they, they, they recover the same mode to conservation and the little symmetry. Okay. So therefore, uh, so therefore this uh, string condensed boundary uh, really corresponds to this uh, uh, Z2 symmetric phase where this Z2 symmetry is not broken. However, this uh, holographic point of view uh, gave us some uh, new insights. That is, uh, if you say the, the boundary symmetry is coming from the bulk conservation law, the bulk will also have a, it's a string. So the string also have a mode two conservation. So actually the, the mode two conservation represents a Z2 one symmetry for the strings, okay. But obviously for this boundary, we only have a Z2 symmetry, but not, not Z2 one symmetry because uh, the string condensed. Or in some way we say this Z2 one symmetry is a spontaneously broken. Is a, its condensation is spontaneously broken. So in some sense, we can still say the boundary have a both a Z2 symmetry and Z2-1 symmetry, just one of them is spontaneously broken. So that's a, a new way uh, of a, a new message from this uh, uh, holographic point of view. And we can really expose this uh, this this uh, this uh, enlarged symmetry. But actually, this enlarged symmetry. This uh, this uh, both this together. This Z two symmetry and Z one symmetry, putting together is what we call categorical symmetry. So this is something 
a more than just a V2 symmetry. There's also V2 one symmetry. And uh, so, uh, uh, so to get another to expose this V2 one symmetry, we can simply consider another boundary which coming from the charge condensation. We can create another boundary for uh, Z2 gauge theory in three dimensions, three plus one dimension, where this uh, Z2 zero symmetry is a broken, spontaneous broken. But the Z2 one symmetry is not broken because here the stream uh, survives at the boundary. So we the boundary have a string. So therefore, uh, so therefore this, uh, so the boundary extension are formed by uh, nothing and a string extension. The boundary is 2D, remember, a boundary is 2D. Okay. And uh, so, and this, uh, and this kind of uh, uh, extension have a fancy name called a two vec Z2. So again, it's a one of a fusion category manipulating study. So this two vec Z2 is a, this, describing this set of extension. So, so therefore, uh, so that's a repeat another uh, boundary of uh, Z2 gate theory. Okay. So, so therefore, there's a, a, so therefore, the key message is that uh, this uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, Z2 symmetric system actually have a bigger symmetry, which is a uh, uh, Z2 zero symmetry and Z2 one symmetry. Here I introduce this very strange symbol V, not instead of uh, times. It's really because of this uh, this Z2 zero one zero symmetry and Z2 one symmetry are not quite independent, because the charge for the Z2 symmetry is a Z2 charge for Z2 one symmetry is a flux string. And these two have a non-trivial mutual statistics. So uh, using this uh, V to represent, they are not quite product. So there are some non-trivial uh, connection between them. So we're using this kind of uh, notation uh, to denote this uh, uh, categorical uh, uh, symmetry. Okay. So, so therefore, uh, we have a, a several different ways to look at this. That is, uh, we have a, a class of Hamiltonian specified by the Z2 symmetry or uh, we can have a class of harmony describing excitations uh, of, uh, of in this uh, fusion two category, that's a categorical point of view. Or we can have a class of boundary extension of a three D plus one dimension two gate theory. And we try to say this is three class of Hamiltonian, they're all related, basically essentially the same. So, uh, so therefore in particular, uh, the, the, all the phase with the Z2, uh, in the Z2 symmetric system correspond to all the phase of this Z2, Z2, one uh, categorical symmetry. Or basically that's another way to say that we can use the boundary of a 3D uh, Z2 gate theory to simulate uh, all the phase of Z2 uh, symmetric system. Okay. And uh, actually those results sounds pretty trivial actually. Oh, it's just a different way to look at something really simple and we all understand very well. And but however, this, uh, this point of view uh, uh, gave us uh, uh, some interesting uh, 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 way to look at the critical point. As I mentioned that a, a Z2 symmetric system actually have a two symmetry. One is a Z2 zero symmetry, another Z2 one symmetry. And uh, in one phase, uh, we have this, uh, like in this phase, the Z2 is a symmetric, that's the Euro symmetric phase, but the Z2 one is spontaneously broken. And the into, in the Z2 spontaneously broken phase, and uh, it's the Z2 one symmetric, that's correspond to an, another boundary for this, uh, uh, that's correspond to two boundary of a Z2 uh, uh, gauge field in one higher dimension. And we know that uh, there's a critical point between this uh, Z2 symmetric phase and the Z2 spontaneous breaking phase. And this critical point attach the Z2 symmetric phase. So we can say that the critical point have a Z2 symmetry. But the critical point also touch this uh, Z2 one symmetric phase. So we can see that uh, this, uh, 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 this critical point also have a, a Z2 one symmetry. Okay. So, so therefore, we find that uh, this, uh, this critical point actually have a, a full categorical symmetry. It's not broken. And uh, that's a one of the emer emerging symmetry and, uh, at a critical point. So, uh, so maybe this is a uh, maybe maybe this is a, a a proper way to look at the critical point. It's a, it have all sorts of uh, uh, emerging symmetry, uh, zero symmetry, one symmetry, higher symmetry, and etc. And they may combine together in the in a strange way. So, in some sense, those emerging symmetry of a category of critical point is actually it's a it's a categorical uh, uh, symmetry. Okay, and. Uh, 
certainly. Sorry. Uh, Yes. Sorry, so uh, actually, actually, uh, so this S string, this S string is just a uh, pi flux in the standard Z2. Yes. Uh, yes. Can I can I create S from the vacuum? Um, yes, but, but you need a you need a uh, you you need this. Uh, I think you need this whole loop operator. Oh, sure, okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, basically, can, basically, can, I'm sorry. You need a membrane operator. You need a membrane operator. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, you need a, you need some membrane, operator, but in the middle, the membrane don't do anything, and uh, then then the boundary of the membrane give you a string. So that is a so in a, in a three D gauge theory, you need a membrane operator to create a a string at its membrane boundary. Yeah, I know. I'm just I'm just uh, I'm just uh, uh, curious. So 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 if the S can be created from vacuum, uh, no matter what operator it is, so should we call it like a conservation or something? Uh, should, should, should okay. conservation the conservation stuff. really means as a, it's a fusion. So this conservation really is a uh, uh, is that a, okay? Yeah, you 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 think that S can be shrink? Yes, yeah, right. Shrink. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, S can be shrink and uh, and it became nothing. Uh, but but the conservation I really means that uh, you could consider a uh, kind of two string and uh, if it don't shrink, then the the two string collide. Then you get you get you get nothing, and this is uh, uh, this is uh, what you mean by conservation. And uh, so actually, that this is a uh, uh, this is a, a typical property of so kind of charge object of a higher symmetry. And uh, so uh, you know, if the charge object is a, is a, can be continuously shrink to the point, and uh, they 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 disappear. And the charge of the really carry non-trivial charge when they have a non, they, they wrap around the space in some non-trivial way, some, some, uh, you, you know that's so that's a, that that is a, a that's really the uh, uh, one one character of a, of a, of this higher form symmetry. Yes, but so, this really so, okay. Yeah, this really just local future. We we don't think about the shrinking. Yeah, Shannon, I, I had a question. Is there something uh, you're Something in the theory that uh, dictates that there's a single critical point. No, and uh, so uh, so here is really. Uh, uh, let me just uh, make a remark here, and uh, you can see here what I really identify is that I don't have this critical point as uh, some kind of gapless boundary as a gapless boundary of the three plus one d z two gate theory. And you may say, well, in a three plus and two gate theory, we have many, many different gapless boundaries. You know, we can just stack with whatever gapless system, like a Fermi liquid, then we get another gapless boundary. Mm -hmm. But there is a notion of a minimal non-condensing boundary. It means that this boundary do not condense E, do not condense S, but also have a minimal amount of excitation, means a minimal heat capacity, minimal space of heat. And this, this minimal boundary, maybe it's a canonical boundary of Z2 uh, gate theory. And this canonical, this minimal non-condensing boundary, we kind of conjecture that most stable. We kind of conjecture that this corresponds to this uh, uh, critical point. Most stable means that they have a minimal number of uh, relevant operators. So maybe here only one relevant operator. Uh, actually, this picture uh, also works for multi critical point. For example, uh, later we'll just uh, discuss Sometimes the phase transition between two phases are one dimension, are first order. You have to fine tone to get a critical point. Then this, uh, then this, uh, this, uh, this multi-critical point after fine toning may carry uh, this categorical symmetry. So this categorical symmetry really is the way to describe those critical points, either multi-critical point, or fine tone critical point, those kind of critical points. Yeah. Shogun? Yes. Uh, just to make sure I I get the physical picture right. Uh, I should think about these things from the point of view of the two plus one D theory as just the domain walls of the fluctuating domain walls of the exactly. So so actually this picture is very simple. When you lead to spontaneous center breaking, they have domain walls and the domain wall have a little confusion rule. So that's what gives us little one symmetric symmetry. So it's really just a, so when I have a domain wall, you have this uh, higher symmetry. So those are really just a, a, a pretty uh, Easy to understand, pretty natural, yeah. And uh, the, the thing we emphasize here is yes. the critical point somehow have a both symmetry. And uh, so, so actually there's a both, both of this, the domain wall fluctuation and the charge fluctuation became important 
and entangled in a certain way, which are characterized by the gapless boundary of a Z2 game theory in one higher dimension. So that's maybe the main message. Thank you. Okay, so so actually, uh, uh, this categorical symmetry have some interesting property. You know, we know here around they have two parts: a Z2 zero symmetry part and a Z2 one symmetry part. Uh, but actually, uh, for the system with a categorical symmetry, here only say system with a categorical symmetry, their ground state, if they are gap the ground state, must break one of them. You know, we cannot have a, a symmetric states symmetric ground state with a full categorical symmetry. I had to break one of them. Really because uh, to get the gap, the boundary, we have to condense something, either condense a string or condense particle in some, for, uh, some, for some arbitrary group G, uh, we have to condense some, uh, some combination for a charge and a string, you know. For instance, for Z2 plus Z2 symmetry, you can condense a charge of first Z2 and string of second to a things like that. But we have to break some part of the categorical symmetry. And then if you don't condense anything, the boundary must be gapless. So therefore, the face with a full categorical symmetry must be gapless. So, so coupled with a minimal uh, excitation uh, condition, so that's give us some hope. Maybe this categorical symmetry can fully characterize this gapless face. At least char fully characterize uh, one or two or few, this uh, uh, gapless face with a minimal uh, amount of excitation. Okay. So this uh, this a feature of a categorical symmetry actually is a proof. Uh, there's a rigorous proof by uh, by Michael, and uh, uh, so but he he considers the one dimensional version of this. So here what I present is a two dimensional version of the same thing. So so we believe uh, this is probably true in any dimension. Uh, so the uh, so the this uh, this uh, the 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 face with the full categorical symmetry are really tied to this gapless uh, face. So. So one cannot help uh, to, to compare this with the ADF CFT uh, picture. And uh, you know, we can uh, uh, mention that uh, uh, when you have in the ADFC picture, uh, when you have a, a, if a conformal field theory have a G symmetry, then the bulk, ADF bulk, uh, would contain a G gate theory. Okay. So there's a, uh, there's a relation between if conformal field theory contain a G symmetry, then the bulk must contain a G gate theory. Okay. Hey, and hi, Xiao Gang. Yes. I just wanted to let you know, we've got about uh, 10 minutes left until the end of the talk. Okay, yeah. So uh, I, I, I'll try to finish quickly, yeah. And uh, so but here what we, what we have is that uh, uh, we have a, a gate theory in one higher dimension, G gate theory in one higher dimension. And then this G gate theory is associated with a particular uh, CFT, not an arbitrary CFT with a G symmetry, but it's a particular CFT with a G symmetry, which is representing this uh, G symmetry breaking transition CFT. So it's a particular CFT. Oh, another way to say that this particular CFT not only have a G symmetry, also have this uh, G n minus one dual symmetry. Those have this dual symmetry. So, so what we really say that uh, this particular CFT with this categorical symmetry have a uniquely determined bulk with a G gate theory. Okay. And so, so, that is, uh, uh, so that is kind of more uh, specific uh, correspondence from the uh, uh, conformal field theory uh, to the bulk gate theory. Um, but in our picture, the bulk gate theory is fully gapped. The boundary is, uh, uh, boundary is, uh, is really uh, gapless. So in some sense, you can imagine this ADS picture is squeezed into this thin layer of boundary. So this, this, this thin layer of boundary, of gapless boundary occurs on this whole picture. So now I cannot help uh, to just uh, combine the two pictures to do this picture. So basically, uh, for this uh, G symmetry breaking CFT with this kind of categorical symmetry, they uniquely determine a bulk, which is a pure G gate theory in ADF space. When you go to infinity, you get this uh, a G gate theory. Uh, here, it's dangerous to say pure G gate theory because uh, usually pure G gate theory means a uh, gate theory with only flux, no charge. But the, here, I think we should allow charge. Uh, 
when I say pure GK theory, it means we have a charge and a flux, but no other field, not, 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 not other, not, no other field. You know, so, so the pure purely really means this. So therefore, this pure GK theory in the ADS space, it kind of proposal may correspond to this uh, particular G symmetry breaking CFT. Okay. And this may, uh, this, uh, this particular may generalize. Okay. So uh, last, maybe I will stop here. Uh, and the, the last slide is that uh, we can also apply this uh, categorical symmetry to study this uh, 3 plus 1D uh, Z2 gate theory. Uh, it's a really, really well-known work by uh, Fracking and Shanker. And uh, there we know that uh, uh, we have this uh, Z2 uh, gate theory or Z2 topological order. And there's a, uh, there's a trivial order, trivial phase. We can reach trivial phase via the Higgs condensation or via the condensed uh, con uh, confinement. And uh, so, so the point here that uh, uh, this uh, Higgs condensation is a, a continuous transition, so that's, this is a critical point. And uh, this critical point is the same as this Z2 symmetry breaking. So it have this kind of a categorical symmetry. This, uh, this, uh, this critical point have the Z2 times Z2 two uh, categorical uh, symmetry. Okay, and uh, however, uh, for uh, uh, for this confinement transition, what happens that it's a first order. Usually, they are first order. But here, we imagine we can fine tune the parameter to reach uh, the the second order transition to 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 get a critical point uh, describing the confinement transition. We know that confinement transition really coming from this uh, a string condensation, Z two flux condensation. So therefore, this, uh, this critical point for confined transition actually uh, would have uh, uh, the Z21 symmetry, okay. So, so usually the, the Higgs transition have the Z2 symmetry in the traditional picture, and the confined transition should have a Z21 uh, uh, symmetry. But however, if you look at the, if you include dual symmetry, we will see that these two critical points really have a different uh, categorical symmetry. One is Z2 times Z22, and that's Z21 and Z21. So, uh, so this may be a more formal way to say that, uh, uh, to show to, or to argue that uh, uh, these two uh, critical points from the confinement transition and from Higgs transition are really uh, different. And they really carry, they, they are different, they carry different uh, categorical symmetry. And in particular, to use ADF CFT to simulate, uh, to capture this, uh, uh, this confined transition we should have a Z2 times Z2 two gate theory in the ADS bulk. That seems uh, sorry, so it's the sorry, right Xiaogang, ADS. So, Xiaogang? Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, 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 so sounds like you want to say that these categorical symmetries are all somehow anomalous. So actually uh, with two symmetries, I'm mean, sorry, with both symmetries, they, they, they must be gapless. Yeah, it's, that's a very, very good question. So when you have both symmetry, they're gapless. So this looks something they are anomalous. But so actually, is there, proof, when we, uh, is there a proof that uh, there's something that you can show? The, no, the, the point is that when you look at it more carefully, uh, we cannot say that because this, uh, the, the, the topological order in higher dimension have a, have a richer structure, not captured by anomaly. So I cannot say uh, these two, just uh, these are two Z to one symmetry is anomalous Z to one times Z to one symmetry. We cannot say that. They are very similar to that, but uh, uh, not that, but I cannot exclude. Sometimes they really can be interpreted as an anomalous symmetry, anomalous z to one times z to one. But uh, we know example they are, they cannot be interpreted as anomaly. Yeah. So this is a, a it's really more general point of view. They very very much like anomalous symmetry, but actually this uh, this uh, entanglement of topological order in one higher dimension is more than anomaly. It's a, it's a, it's a more more than anomaly. But that's a, uh, that's a very, very good question. We have been bothered us for, for quite a while, yeah. So, so, the, so this may be the, my last message is that uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, confinement transition actually it has a different categorical symmetry, really different critical point, describe a different ADSFT theory and et cetera. Okay, so, uh, so, uh, so I would uh, end here, and uh, so actually all this uh, can be generalized because uh, so far we talk about uh, just a Z2 symmetry. We already have so many structures. And all this uh, all are said can be generalized to the uh, non-abelian group or higher symmetry 
Uh, there is something even beyond higher symmetry, what we call the algebraic higher symmetry. And, uh, and uh, so then there's all kind of uh, 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 mathematics on uh, this category theory and describing uh, this, uh, this new mathematics structure. And we all, we, maybe let me just, just, just say that. I prepared too much. So, the, so basically, uh, basically, once you have this uh, a categorical symmetry, you can classify the gap liquid, just uh, all different uh, way to break categorical symmetry. And this collapsation would include uh, the ICD SPD for this algebraic higher symmetry. And also, uh, we can also find a way to gauge the algebraic higher symmetry and the anomalous algebraic symmetry and uh, this, you know, all that. So, so there's a, uh, there's a quite a, a, a formalism uh, involved. But, uh, but the idea is very simple, but once you follow this idea, you can generalize to the very uh, high symmetry. Thank you very much. Thanks, Xiao Gong. Um, I see that there are some questions in the Q and A that I'm going to go ahead and read. We do have uh, we do have a little bit of time for some questions. Um, if uh, if any panelists have a question, um, maybe just let me know. Type it into the chat, and then I'll get to you after I finish reading the first one of these. Uh, the first one, I, I think, actually. Um, this may have been answered in response to Senthil, but let me go ahead and ask it anyway. Uh, so this is from Lokman Sui. It's, the question is, are the E sub S strings Z2 domain walls? Uh, yes, and, uh, at the boundary, it can be viewed as Z2 domain wall. So it's a co-dimension one at the boundary. But however, when there's a, this S string uh, in, the, in the bulk, it can co-dimension two, and uh, so, so they are no longer real as domain wall. Yeah, so at the boundary, they are domain walls. And they are indeed coming from Z2 symmetry breaking domain wall. So these are, these are, these are emerging, uh, these, uh, these so-called emerging Z2-1 symmetry is really coming from this uh, 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 symmetry breaking domain wall. Good, okay, thanks. Um, so here's another, uh, here's another question from Liu Jun Zhu. The question is, is this formalism applicable only to discrete and unitary symmetries so far? Very, very good question. And uh, yes, at the moment, I, I did not answer, I should emphasize the G is a finite. The symmetry group is finite. And when you think about the higher symmetry, algebraic higher symmetry, we always, always think about they're all finite. So therefore, the corresponding gate theory in one higher dimension would be the gapped uh, topological phase. Certainly, we are dying to know whether we can generate this picture to continuous symmetry. Yeah, this is a, be really, really interesting. And uh, there will be very, very different. Uh, I would say there's a major change, but I hope some of this uh, point of view can still survive and help us uh, to, to get uh, this different picture for continuous symmetry. Uh, can, I, can I ask one more, one more question? Yeah, go ahead, Tenka. Yeah, so in the, in the last, uh, in, the, in the very last slide, this are line says categorical symmetry equals gravitational anomaly. Why, why gravitational anomaly? Okay, yeah, this is the thing I skip. Basically, the idea here is that uh, you can see uh, when you think about symmetry, we think about symmetry as a, as a fusion category. So we view those particles as, a, as a, some kind of a topological extension. But those are, uh, those, those are symmetry charts, when we view that topological station actually uh, anomalous, I have a gravitational anomaly. So the idea here is that uh, we can combine the symmetry charge, topological charge, they all together, they form some kind of a mixed category, which have a gravitational anomaly. And then this, uh, and this may be the key. So, so this effective gravitational anomaly which characterize symmetry charge topological extension altogether is what control Lorentz dynamics and the control the duality. So actually, one thing I, mean, I didn't talk about is uh, once you compute this uh, effective gravitational anomaly, which is same thing as a as a as a categorical so categorical symmetry is a gravitational anomaly. Once you know that, you know the all, all the low energy physics like a phase phase transition and all that. So uh, so this is a uh, this is a very general way to derive a duality relation. But when you can combine the topological charge and the symmetry charge all together and, uh, 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 and view, some if, view this as an effective gravitational anomaly and using that to derive uh, duality relations. 
so so suppose I consider a simple example, right? So for example, just the one plus one D, you know, I think criticality that that can be viewed as a two, uh, what, I mean, boundary of a two D topological order. So actually, uh, yeah. So so it's at the critical order. point, yeah, right. So 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 I so so at the critical point, it's just a self dual I think criticality. But so 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 that one also has a gravitational anomaly or, or not? Uh, yes, yeah. That is a so this I think critical point. Uh, should be viewed as a boundary of uh, this uh, Z2 gate theory. And uh, so actually, this, uh, uh, so there is a way uh, to do that uh, because of this uh, icing critical point have this uh, uh, partition function. And the partition function may have different uh, sectors with a different uh, symmetry twist. So ah, once you okay. consider this uh, mm. partition function with sectors, you have multiple partition functions, and this partition function transform using ST matrix of a topology in one higher dimension. Actually, mm. in one plus one dimension, how to use a categorical symmetry to determine the gapless uh, uh, critical point. This connection can be done via this method. In, in, in one plus dimension and two plus one bulk, uh, we have ST matrix, we can use that to determine the uh, tra uh, module transformation property of uh, uh, one plus one D CFT. And we can really compute from categorical symmetry to compute the gapless states. So this, uh, that's a good example to show this, maybe this program works. Uh, but we don't know how to work in higher dimensions, so that's a very important open question. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I think we have to stop there since we're a bit over time. So thanks again, Xiao Gang, for a really nice talk, and uh, and thanks to all of our speakers. Uh, that's the end of the meeting, um, and uh, and thanks to everybody for attending and participating. Um, so uh, links to the uh, video, there's a link in the chat to the video recordings of the lectures from days one and two, uh, and the links to today's video recording, uh, th that will also be available. Uh, you can find all of that um, at, the, uh, at the meeting webpage. Um, and actually, maybe I should post that URL to the chat just real quick before we finish in case anybody's looking for it. Um, This will work. This is the link to the uh, to the meeting schedule. Okay, and you can see that there's a link to at least some of the recordings up there, but that will get updated. Um, okay, so uh, thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Mike. And Thank you, also Mike. thanks, uh, Shamit, and thanks, Ashwin for organizing these wonderful events. Thank you. <laughs>